Hello you gorgeous bunch, thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Amy if you've never met before and if you have been watching any of my recent videos you'll probably have seen a bit of a pattern of me doing some repots and thinking that they're going to be quick and then turning out that they're not, they're not quick at all. <laughs> I'm really hoping today isn't going to be like that but I'm being more realistic and yeah it probably will end up being like that. So today we are repotting my Anthurium papillolaminum um, and that is because there is so much root rot in this pot, um, so much root rot and it's completely my fault. So I've decided to do this because it's just, it's it just looks so sad so there's obviously there's two leaves they're both damaged because when they were unfurling um i didn't spray it enough and it was in like the height of summer last year and humidity like the natural humidity in my apartment was low so they both came out like ripped but as you can see this one is discoloring substantially and in an unusual way so like I'm not an expert on like yellowing leaves by any means, but normally, um, like when a leaf is kind of dying off naturally, like because of old age or something, I, I feel that it will like just slowly like absorb all of the nutrients that was left in the leaf, like all the, so some nutrients are mobile, some aren't in leaves. And they'll kind of you know, slowly absorb some of what's left back into the petiole and, um, the leaf will slowly yellow that way and nor it doesn't it just doesn't look like this like there's some weird like speckling going on i feel like there's probably like a bit of nutrient deficiency and just a bit of well you know root rot root rot signs but it's it's definitely an interesting way that it's discolored in my experience with anthuriums um, this is the oldest leaf on the plant and this is the, well, the newest. It's not got that kind of similar speckling, but it's, it's definitely not the happiest, um, either. And this caterpillar, I don't know if you've, so you can see it here, this caterpillar, um, is actually, it's shriveled a little bit, which I'm, <laughs> this, this is what's prompted this repot. Like I was like, oh, the leaf's dying off. Oh no that'll be that rot <laughs> but this caterpillar shriveling I'm like oh, damn it because <laughs> that means that the leaf that would have emerged from here is probably not going to emerge and it'll probably I don't know have to start again from a new growth point or maybe we'll revive it now I don't know but I'm a little bit gutted because I was really happy with how these leaves were sizing up last year and I was just hoping that it will continue and I feel like that's probably not going to happen now. So I'm going to try and show you some of the rot. <laughs> Obviously, glass vessel, sun's bright, reflections might not might not work. But here, at least if I can just like get real up close and personal and show you. Um, it's so hard to tell. Can you see? I mean, there's a whole host of brown gunk in there. There is also some healthy ones. So the rot in this plant has been in there for a while. Like I first noticed it last summer and it was still pushing out like the new leaves. Both of these leaves came out last summer. It lost a couple of the old ones, but I was like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. There's some new leaves, there's some new roots growing, it's fine. And so I left it and I was also using um, the Great White Myco and I thought, you know what? all of that good bacteria that's going to like help break down the bad bacteria they're going to be fine and for a while it was fine it was fine the, the rot that was in there wasn't spreading there was loads of new healthy roots <laughs> they're all rotted now and there, i'm sure there'll be many people watching this thinking it's because it's in no drainage Duh. why is it in no drainage it's not because it's in no drainage it's because 
the fool that I am, I let it dry out. Every single time. Every single time. Every single time. <laughs> I've got it in like a chunky mix and I let it dry out every single time. There is not one moment where I was like, oh, that, that, that water reservoir is looking a little bit low. I'll, I'll refill that. No, just bone dry, like Sahara Desert, dusty in there. I let it dry out. And even, or like more importantly, I don't know, I was going to say, even though like anthurium roots are often really chunky, like they look like they can hold a good amount of water in them. I don't even know if that's true. Maybe, maybe because they're chunky they need more water. I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of hand gesturing going on today. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the roots, because I let the substrate dry out, the roots dried out. And then whenever I'm like, oh my God, it's dry a dollop of water in there the roots are dry they're dead they can't do anything with that water so they just sit there basking in that wet environment and they rot so i'm gonna stop talking and i'm gonna take it out of that vessel and we are gonna see what we're left with <laughs> what well, i'm really annoyed about that like, i'm finally doing this today i've i've been planning on doing this for a while I was going to wait until I've done like my April updates video and kind of show show it then but I'm just I'm done waiting I want to get it done now and I haven't got any hydrogen peroxide which I'm a bit annoyed about because I feel like that could be really really helpful <laughs> today like I'd like to take it out and um just soak it in hydrogen peroxide for a bit but I don't think I'm well I don't think I'll be able to do that. I haven't got any hydrogen peroxide, so I can't do that. I know that. Just taking off the pot extender strip that I put in there. <sighs> Let's see what we're working with. Already dropping soil everywhere. Have you ever smelt rot? That. That smells rotty. I'm gonna try and get you like a bit closer. Oh, I don't even, I'm actually, I don't often take my rings off, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a couple of them off. I'm gonna take off my smiley face ring because it gets, it'll just get soil and rotty gunk all in the, the smiley faces. And I'm gonna take off my engagement ring and my wedding ring because I don't want all of this getting in amongst the stones. Um, I've got some other plain bands on that I'll keep on. Okay. Oh God. Oh God, it's so bad. Look. going to be a quick repot is it oh god i'm so sorry i love this anthurium what have i done and the substrate's really wet because <laughs> I, I watered the cabinet the other night if i prepared i probably wouldn't have watered this one just because i've said before <laughs> i find it easier to take Oh, there's a, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, there's a whole worm in there. <laughs> um, I don't wanna hurt you. <laughs> I, I use um, Soil Ninja products, which are amazing. Obviously they don't prevent, prevent you from getting root rot. Look at all of that, oh God but they have worm castings in them. And if you're lucky, you get a whole worm. I've had a bag of worm castings with like five worms in it. I freaking love it. Like you get, you get healthy, happy plants. If the owner can care for them, this is not a reflection of Soil Ninja products. 
I promise you that. Um, you get like lovely happy plants, gorgeous, gorgeous substrate, and you get some like free pets. I didn't know there was a worm in this one. I'm so happy. I've got a worm in my um, in my orchid terrarium and I've named her Wanda. And yes, that is, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the wife, the werewolf wife from the Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> or maybe it's one of the kids, I don't know. But it's, uh, uh, yeah, she's, she's, she's a worm named off of, oh God, this is so bad, from Hotel Transylvania. I've lost the worm. It's probably like, fuck, oh, evacuate. <laughs> this is so, so bad. <sighs> Why did I wait so long? Oh. Okay, do you know what I'm gonna try? I'm gonna try and get you a little bit closer to the whole root ball. I wish I knew where the worm went. <laughs> if you see it, shout. No wonder, no wonder that leaf was dying. Just look at, look at all of that. Oh, there's, is that the worm? No, that's not the worm. <laughs> the worm looks a little bit like the, the roots. Did it fall out? What I'm gonna do with all of this substrate is I'm actually gonna um, like let it dry out and then pick out all the reusable bits like the pawn and the leka and I'm gonna um like treat them clean them boil them I don't know do do whatever I can and reuse them wow there, there is but oh this is really bad I've never had a root rot quite this bad before I mean, I say that I've had root rot that just kind of completely, like all of the roots go. But for some reason that feels a bit better than this because I'm now just wrestling with trying to unpick. Just gonna, just gonna shake it out. Oh, that was a healthy root. We can't afford to lose those. Oh no. I'm, where did the worm go? God, it must be terrified. I wanna, did it go in here? I can't see it. And I wanna know where, it... like, I don't wanna like pull it and Ooh, unrip it. <laughs> where am I show yourself? I can put you in a safe space. What's, what's really great about having the worm like worms in your substrate like from so basically if you if you buy I think if you buy any substrate from Soul Ninja they have worm castings in there and they sell worm castings and that is because worm castings is an amazing fertilizer for your plants like it is amazing and worm castings is basically worm poop <laughs> and so if you have a worm living in your substrate you've got like a consistent consistent fertilizer just working it's just doing the job for you just living its best life in a potted house plant i mean maybe this guy wasn't living its best life i don't really know how it feels about this much rot <laughs> and oh when the soil was dry oh i doubt it i doubt it likes living in a dry environment oh oh god it's a lot of responsibility <laughs> um but they as well as like creating a natural fertilizer they also help aerate the soil obviously this is not a good example don't just it, like what i'm saying is all amazing don't take this example this is completely um user error completely but i've got some do you know what, if i can put in a clip i will like in my um in my orchid terrarium where wanda lives you can see where she's like slivered that's the right word for how a how a worm moves right slivered slivered through the soil so there's like trails tracks i don't know tunnels 
of where she's moved and that will be like naturally aerating the soil that's like a pocket where oxygen can hang out where like water can travel through it's fascinating i'm really enjoying having just random pet worms um okay i'm just gonna stop talking and try and do this see there's the worm i'm gonna try and get him out but he looks a bit scared he's like proper curled around Ooh, i'm sorry little one is there more than one of you there's more than one of you is there or is that just your end oh it's so hard to tell I don't want to pull him out. I don't want to hurt you. Oh! Hey! There's one little guy. I'm just going to put you um, just there. Are you a family? Do you want to stick together? You can go in the new substrate. You might be happier in there potentially, after this really stressful experience. Do you have babies in here? Oh, the babies may not be okay. I've lost you. How did I lose you? There he is. I can see him. I can see him. I'm not gonna be able to get him out. Oh, God. Oh god, I'm so stressed for the worm. <laughs> no longer stressed about the plant, I'm just stressed about the worm. <laughs> I'm still stressed about the plant. But the plant like like the, the plant's different. If I if I kill the worm or like rip a worm in half, like I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get over that. Can you just fall out? You're just probably clinging on tighter, aren't you, to whatever you're clinging on to in there. I feel like there's more alive roots than I was expecting, so that's... That's fantastic. I mean, that's a hefty root system, isn't it? My plan was to put it back into the same vessel, but I'm now wondering if I'm going to be able to do that. I wish I had hydrogen peroxide. Little worm. <laughs> Where are you? Did you come out? I can't see it. <laughs> what I'm probably going to do is put the worms into the new. There he is. There he is. There he is. I've got him. I've got him. Come here, you little squirmy devil, you. Oh, oh my gosh. It's it's literally, I mean, obviously it's crawling away from me. It's terrified, isn't it? But seriously, little friend, I'm, I'm a good guy. Here we go, here we go. He's got such a white bum. Look at him, let him go. He's like, shit, run. Go on, go back, be with your friend. Ooh, okay. Right, hopefully there's no more in here. I can't see any more. <sighs> oh, God. Hydrogen peroxide would be so helpful right now. Like, why am I doing this to myself? Like, I'm just gonna have to... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and rinse the wet soil off and I'm going to cut or just you know pull as many of the dead roots off that I can as many as I can and then I'm going to repot and hope that 
nothing will spread. And if it does, we might be back here doing this again in a couple of months. <laughs> I'm gonna go do that. Okay. I have changed my mind. I am gonna get some hydrogen peroxide before I pop this up permanently. I think I think I did a good a pretty good job of getting the majority of the rot off and I'm pretty pleased with the like the root system that we've still got left but I can't get all of that rot off and I basically just want to I want to soak it in hydrogen peroxide so I'm gonna get some and I will finish filming the video but what I'm gonna do in the meantime is I'm gonna get some moss and just like protect these roots I don't want these ones drying out and us 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 not having any of this root system left so that's what i'm going to do instead of potting it up into uh, what i was going to do is pot it into the soil ninja anthurium and orchid substrate because that is a nice substrate but instead i'm just going to go and get the soil ninja back the moss and do that instead and i'm gonna figure out what to do with these worms i will be back these worm guys are these worms are like crawling towards the rotten substrate so I think I'm gonna find a little place to like just put them enclosed <laughs> so I've got this is one of the orchid terrariums I built um, I had to take the orchid that it was the Ludicia, Ludicia dream capture one I think I had to take it out of here because it didn't have any roots it wasn't rooting so I put it into a different substrate to root in and I've definitely seen a little wormy guy in here. Haven't named this one, but I'm gonna put these worms. I've lost one. No, there is. I'm gonna put these worms in here so that they're safe, basically. I feel like such a like child again I used to love playing with like mud worms making like mud pies like when I was little did any of you guys do that <laughs> just look at them oh he's trying to go for my fingers they're so they're just so fascinating <gasps> look at him I mean I'm fascinated I don't know right okay little little guy you just pop yourself in there Timber! Sorry. Go on. Okay. Oh, he's already digging in. Good guy. Well done. You're the one that's a little bit startled. Love that you can like see through them. That is even more fascinating. Wow. Like, can I see you producing the fertilizer for my plants? No. I probably won't be able to show you. But there they are. Hopefully they'll be happy in there until I figure out what I'm doing with this. This isn't going to turn into like a worm appreciation account, I promise. But there might be a little bit of that in there. I have the soil and just sphagnum moss. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop it up a little bit because it's quite it's long, which is great. But I want it to try and get in amongst those roots. So I'm just going to chop up some bits because otherwise I don't think it's gonna get in there in all the gaps. Like, look how long that strand is. It's all pink. So cool. So, if you have been watching any of my recent videos, you will know that I have been partnering with Soil Ninja. I'm part of their affiliate program, which I'm really excited to be a part of because it's just amazing. I mean, just look. Look at the sphagnum moss, it is alive. It is growing, how exciting. And all of their substrates are full of like, just all the beneficial goodness. I like worms, I like little springtails, like it's just, it's amazing. I, I feel like it's the best we can give our plants without like going to the jungle and just, you know, <laughs> taking like their natural soil We'll just give them the best of what we've got over here. I'm sorry about that noise, that was horrible. I'm 
sorry, how beautiful is this potato sphagnum? Like the pink, the lime greens, I love it, love it. So yeah, I am affiliate. I have a link down below that'll get you 10% off your order. <sighs> These noises, so annoying. <laughs> trying to promote a brand here. Shh. <laughs> so yeah, I, I know, I know that there's been loads of you that have already ordered because it was like, so I've got, a, it's a limited time, this 10% off code. And at the time that I'm filming, there's only 10 uses left. I will, like when I upload the video, I'll put how many's left on the screen. It might still be 10. I don't know when this video is going up, but that's the UK one. I also have an EU link and there's a few more available there. Still a limited amount, but there's a few there. So like EU people, come on, grab yourself some amazing sphagnum moss, get some anthurium and orchid soil, get your components, have a little browse, get 10% off win-win happy plants again don't don't this is not so ninja's fault <laughs> this is my fault you all have happy plants get 10 percent off you will thank you to me at no extra cost to you so i'm happy so thank you and yeah let's just there's a whole lot of hand action going on in this video i'm sorry let's let's get those roots into this moss so i have cleaned the jar that it was in i'm just going to put it back in there bit of the moss at the bottom i really really hope that this kind of like interim bit i mean it's going to be stressful for the plant it's going to be stressful but i just hope that it doesn't please don't die please 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 don't die yeah see i don't know how i'm going to get all the all the moss into all the areas of the roots i'm just gonna have to like try and Poke it, poke it in there. Okay. Yeah, I need more moss. If I can get the little bits into like more of the like center middle bit then. I don't mind having like the longer bits on the outside. I need more. Oh, this moss is so so pretty please 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 don't die please 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 don't die Now gonna do something that's probably gonna look a bit ridiculous give me a minute so i've got a really big like freezer ziploc style bag and i'm just gonna put the pot inside and somehow secure it i basically just want to keep the moisture in around the moss so that the moss can keep the moisture in around the roots and just keep everybody happy while we wait for the hydrogen peroxide to arrive to save the day. Ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so that's all I can do right now. I'm gonna get some hydrogen peroxide and I will see you I'll see you shortly. Okay, should we talk about the elephant in the room? I am using a Christmas mug in April. <laughs> I'm joking, I did my hair. <laughs> so clearly it's not the same day, it's actually two days later. <laughs> Um, and I did my hair. <laughs> and when I say I did my hair, I mean, I actually did my hair. I didn't go to a hairdresser because I don't really trust them. Um, no offense to any hairdressers out there. I've just had my hair messed up quite a few times. <laughs> so 
haven't really found that good one yet. <laughs> um, but this was something that was both spontaneous and also planned for a really long time, which is similar to like a lot of my, a lot of my things. Like if you watched my cutting my Monstera video, something I planned for a really long time, like I've been thinking about it for a really long time. But then when it came to actually doing it, it just happened without much planning. Same with this really. I've been thinking about it for a really long time. I've done like a couple of strand hairs and then it just got to like the day before and I was like, tomorrow's the day, I'm doing it. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. <laughs> it was actually supposed to be a bit more like orange. Let me get a little bit closer. I don't feel like the camera's really picking up. So it was supposed to be quite an orange, orange color. So I bleached it using this and then I put orange, this orange on it. And I'm not showing you the products. <laughs> I don't recommend you do this. I would never, I would never advise anybody to do their own hair, but I'm really bad at taking my own advice. So but yeah, so it was supposed to be a bit of a brighter orange, um, but I actually really quite like it. But this is not a hair channel. So let's just get on with helping my Anthurium papillolaminum. So, I did get some hydrogen peroxide and it is currently soaking in it. So you can probably see all of like the bubbles. Ooh. I did get some good like close-up shots. So this has been soaking. I don't know what the time is. So it's been soaking for 35 minutes and it is still like fizzing and bubbling away, but I think I'm just gonna take it out now and um, pot it. Hang on, I need, I got a bowl to put the hydrogen peroxide water in because <laughs> I want to put it back in that vessel. So let's get the substrate sorted out. So I'm going to be using the um, Soil Ninja. The Anthurium and Orchid mix. It looks like this. And I'm just gonna put it into my usual bin. It has already got some like, I mean, just some little bits in it. There's some bark, there's some pond. Well, not pond, the semi-hydro. I'm going to put some of the anthurium and orchid bark, um, bark soil into here just to use it really. Oh, yeah. So, the soil ninja anthurium and orchid soil mixture is like you can kind of you can see it's quite perlite heavy. Um, and I don't, I haven't used perlite in like not to this scale in my mixes for a little while just because I find it so annoying that it like floats to the top gradually over time but I sorry about that noise I have used um I've extended like I've done some pot extenders on some of my other anthuriums with the anthurium and orchid soil from soil ninja and they've rooted like crazy really fast in it so I know anthuriums love this substrate I know it but I haven't potted a whole um, anthurium into it yet so this is gonna be the first time and obviously I have just I've got other bits in there so it's not completely completely their mix so yeah this will be the first time that I'm potting a whole anthurium into it but I know it's gonna be I know it's gonna be really really happy so let's just get to it shall we um oh my god I am so sorry about the noises. Like, I'm not a professional. I haven't got a professional mic to block these noises out. I hope to one day. Right, I had a, I put like a little bit of tape on here just to kind of secure the stems. It kept flopping over, but it's looking it's looking so much better. I really need these noises to stop. I was working on my um on my footstool. Just gonna not because we know I'm gonna drip. I'm just 
gonna move the table over instead. Question is, where do I put this? So I'm gonna pour a little bit into here. I guess I can just balance this onto the, oh, I'll put it on the lid. Put it on the lid. Honestly, that it looks so much better. It really does. Okay, let's get rid of the tape. All right, I'm gonna try and pour this in here without uh, spilling it everywhere. This is very stupid. Not too bad. You should definitely have a cough with me there. But it wasn't too bad. Spillage all mopped up. <laughs> Let's get this anthurium into its new home. So what, um, if you've never used hydrogen peroxide to treat root rot before, it is it is pretty good at doing that. It kills all, all bacteria, like bad and good. So. I'm really glad I'm potting this anthurium into soil ninja substrate because I know that they've got so many like amazing organisms in their substrate that it's just gonna it's gonna have all the good bacteria again real soon. Hopefully not that much of the bad bacteria. I've got so this is just a little bit of leftover black lecker from a pot that I bought and probably will never buy again because it was so expensive. But I'm just gonna put this at the bottom to have be a water reservoir. Water reservoir layer. I don't mind that this still has a bit of like the hydrogen peroxide water on the edge and I also don't mind that it's got a bit of moss in there. I'm not fast. So let me show you what the roots are looking like and probably drip everywhere. So they look a lot better. What I'm going to do is just take off a little bit because I can see some of them. Like this one's extra hangy, is that? I would kind of be tempted if there were more roots in this top section I would kind of be tempted to chop off this chunk and um, see if there's any growth points on it but because there aren't that many roots in this section I'm a little bit reluctant to do that to be honest and saying that those roots have only grown because I gave it a pot extender so can I put it back in that pot or is that going to be too too short enough to do another pot extender. Have I got a longer pot? I know I've got a wider pot, but it doesn't need a wider pot. Let me just go and see what other pots I've got. So the next size pot that I've got is this. <laughs> and it's huge. just taken it out of here because it had root rot I can't give it like a massive pot with the risk of like more rot can I there is a pigeon on my balcony who is clearly trying to get my attention to provide food I'm sorry Pete not today you need to figure out where to get food on your own without me stop relying on me I think I'm gonna stick with this one and I guess I'll just have to give it another pot extender, which is a bit annoying, but I think it's my only option. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So, like, I'm really impressed with how many roots there still are. Like, that's, that's a lot of roots, isn't it? Considering there must have been so, there was so much rot, there must have been so many, like, roots in here to begin with. I'm going to give it such a good pot extender as well. Right, okay. Let's start filling it up. So for the pot extender, I've just got some of the acetate that I used to make the moss poles with. And the question is, do I remove this leaf?
if I do, I could put the pot extender up quite high. I'm gonna do it. I did it. <laughs> I had to not think about that for too long. Oh, bye leaf. I'm I'm sad. I'm sad because this leaf I don't think oh, I don't think this leaf's even been on this plant for a year. Or like it might be just a year. It didn't deserve this life. I'm sorry. I'll be better. I'm gonna be better, I promise. Can you tell with the nice substrate that I'm doing? I'm gonna be so much better. I promise, I promise. Oh, it still looks so ridiculous, but hey, it just, it needs to happen. What I've done is I've not, um, can you see, I've left some of, can you see I've left some of the petiole? That's because there's the possibility that it could flower. And, you know, I really would love to do some anthurium seed kind of pollination I've got a couple of anthuriums that are in flower or like I've got like my forgetting in the cabinets just pushing out pushing out an inflow I've got my anthurium uh, velvet moira is pushing out a flat well it's like the f I don't know all the technical terms like the is it the fadex I don't think it is, but it's it's opened. It's not produced, it's not like it's not in the female stage yet, and it's it's obviously not in the male stage yet either. That's not straight. But I have got I've got some anthurium magnificum pollen in the freezer. But I don't think it's going to be viable to be honest. It's been in there for a little while, so I don't know. That's a good size pot. There we go. <laughs> you look a little bit silly. It's like um, like the cone of shame. <laughs> I do not like the cone of shame. You watched up? <laughs> that is such a great film. Me and Steve watched it recently, but I, I just I freaking love I love Doug. I love Doug. Oh, I'm annoyed. Can you see the overlap? That's like in the front, which is upsetting. I feel like I've just given this plant the cone of shame. It's not the cone of shame. It's the sh it's shame on my part. Because I haven't got a vessel with the right size for it. Right, let's fill her up. Get you stood up right. Oh, every time. Okay. He's done. Ideally, like, you know, he's leaning. I think ideally I'd really like to face him this way and for his leaf to just turn. It's because he's been in the cabinet and all of them have just twisted to look at the window. We need to figure out how to make that look better. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. <laughs> in the cone of shame. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make up a mixture of the great white myco water and put it in and just hope that, <laughs> that it's okay I'm gonna pray to the plant gods that I mean ideally this caterpill will like replump and be happy there'll be new growth there'll be loads of new roots there'll be no more root rot Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. 
Okay, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I would love to hear if you've used hydrogen peroxide on your plants for any reason, so please comment down below. I'd also love to know if you've ever put one of your plants in the cone of shame. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye.